What's up, everybody? It is 3.11 p.m. Eastern Time on September 25th, 2017. All right, we're going to do some updates here on Maria. We're going to talk about Lee. We are going to talk about Pilar here in the west side of Mexico that is making landfall. It's actually a uh, tropical depression now. Uh, we pretty much called this this morning. We knew once this thing hit land, it was going to die uh, die out uh, fairly quickly. But the thing that's interesting about it is you can see the... The front wall of our jet stream here that we've been talking about the last couple days. If you follow my mouse, this is one big U here. Uh, it's missing the vapor here because of the dry areas in Southern California and the Baja, but picture a big U like this. This is the front that we're waiting to move and to take out Maria. Check out how it's pulling all the moisture out of Pilar and bring it right up through the dead center of Texas now. Um, that's why I was reporting on the rain that they're getting there. Some places were estimated to get 14 inches of rain. I don't know if it's that drastic. Um, I'm not there to uh, tell you. Uh, I haven't really talked to anyone from that area. Uh, I'm sure people in the comments section, if you're from Texas, maybe give us some updates on uh, the type of rainfall you guys are getting. That is straight up from uh, Pilar once again. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about here. Uh, we'll start with Maria. Uh, you can see these bands already getting pulled up in through South Carolina and even the northern areas of Georgia. Um, that does have to do a little bit with this jet stream. Just because the wall isn't there yet, uh, there is forces going on. Um, if you can see, the, the movement of the moisture is basically going south here, and then it rounds that U and then comes up. And some of that force is beginning to pull moisture off of Maria and up through the state. So we could be seeing weather uh, possibly already in like West Virginia, uh, areas of, we of West Virginia, and then West Virginia. That's fun to say. Uh, so anyway, we got Maria spinning around. Um, guys, the warnings for the uh, the Outer Banks have uh, pretty much, ch they've changed a little bit. They're, the uh, warnings are a little bit deeper. We talked about this this morning. And the reason for this are because of all these channels that go in, into uh, North Carolina and stuff like this, these channels. Uh, don't be surprised if you see this go even deeper inland. Uh, we're talking 200 miles uh, outside the eye of this Category 1 storm are still tropical for storm winds. So we need to, you know, we need to watch this, especially these people here um, in the Outer Banks. I'm sure you guys are well aware, whoever lives there now, that you guys are under watches and warnings right now. It's because of the storm surge and the flooding that they're worried about now. Now we're talking two to four feet of storm surge Partly in due, uh, partly because of the high tides that are going to be going on around the same time that the storm is getting there. So just a little bit of extra uh, whatever for you guys to deal with. Not going to be fun, but again, we're still dealing with a Cat 1 storm. It doesn't look like it's going to make landfall, guys, but we just don't know yet. We, we are waiting for this jet stream. I know, repeat, 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 but guess what? That's how weather works sometimes, guys. We are waiting for this front wall to get here, and it's stalling. And part of it, in my opinion... Ooh, sorry about that epilepsy. Um, part of part of this, in my opinion, is because this this front wall is being also hung up a little bit, possibly by Pilar over here. So this wall, even though it's a, it's a moving force, it's moving west to east. Uh, we were talking about this a couple days ago, how the U came out here and then did like this kind of turn out to the west and then came back in, and we were remembering the bottom part of it was swinging left to right like this, and different things can affect that. So. Pilar down here could possibly be aiding in the slowing down of this front wall. Um, basically, don't be surprised if you see it start to bend out. So the this front wall may stay a little bit here. You could see it moving slowly across Texas. It could start coming up this way like that. And that may, in turn, have effects on Maria. We just don't know yet. We're getting into those last couple days where we're really going to know what this thing is going to do and where it's going. But regardless, guys, Outer Banks areas and uh, Southeast Virginia... As far as Chesapeake Bay, guys, even into the Delaware areas, need to be aware of this. Um, this is going to affect the coastlines all up and down here. There's uh, riptides all the way down to South Florida. That means they're all the way up into probably Jersey. And then as we move on uh, in the next couple days, you might even see riptides uh, along Long Island and stuff like that. Not out of the question, guys. This is a big, wide storm, very big wind field. Uh, this happens normally when they hit. Uh, cooler waters, the wind field expands. Uh, that doesn't mean it's really getting stronger. Uh, it really means that it's just expanding. The wind field is greater, so you're getting those winds in more places, just not super strong. But once again, guys, we can't forget, this is a hurricane. 
It may drop down to a tropical storm, but still, when you live on the coast with tropical weather, guys, that's bad news. You, you don't want that. It doesn't do good to your beaches and those low houses and stuff like that. And then, again, the channels that go inland, uh, there's a chance of them flooding. So this could extend into the state. Uh, we don't know yet. We just need to keep an eye on this thing. And some other things I want to talk about, too. All right, let's talk about Lee really quick. We got Lee out here in the Atlantic. It's in a, a I would say, a southwest movement right now. Um, again, a lot of people aren't really talking about Lee uh, because of where it is. It's not really an effect on the U.S. as of right now. It's not projected to be either. Um, as of now, here are those models. You can see, again, this triangle, this black triangle line here is the current direction, but mostly all if not all the models are on agreement that it will be taken out by the same front that Maria is in or, or will be in shortly but guys I just want to run something by you there is a chance now that this storm uh, being that its movement is southwest right now if it continues on that movement we could be dealing with uh, you know Lee might get low enough to the south where it misses that jet stream pole and could be somewhere down here in the next couple days you know that's why we watch this stuff um, that's why the spaghetti models they do change um, if you remember with Irma they were changing almost every hour uh, when it was riding through this area going towards Cuba uh, during that whole fiasco. So, again, guys, we don't know where these storms go. The spaghetti models do help. They are generally uh, kind of accurate with their with their ideas within three days and stuff like that. So I don't really like going past that anymore. But we're going to do that a little bit in this video just because it's very interesting to see some of the stuff that might be going on in the near future. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm not predicting anything. I'm just showing you data. Uh, sometimes it's fun to check this stuff out of course I don't wish uh, any harm upon anyone any state at any time but again guys this is weather it's very interesting to see and again it's very very curious about some of the stuff that might be coming up, uh, coming up in the future that I want to talk about so once again with Lee as of right now projected to do this southwest motion until that front wall we just talked about with Pilar possibly stalling it a little bit and the wall that's gonna hit Maria and make it go out into the ocean up you know, up through the jet stream and then towards some other areas that might get clobbered with both of these storms at the same time. But again, if Lee continues on this southwest motion, depending on if it picks up speed or not, again, the more it moves south, the more warm water it's going to get into. It could possibly raise in speed. Um, if you notice, these two storms are almost parallel with each other. But again, Maria is a Cat 1, about 80 mile per hour sustained winds. And Lee is also a Cat 1, but it has about 90 mile an hour sustained winds. So about 10 mile an hour difference there. Um, that really has to do with the water. It has to do with momentum. Uh, Maria is kind of interacting with land now. Uh, there is a lot of momentum in Maria. They've been talking about that a lot on the Weather Channel, and that's why they have these warnings and issues uh, going in so deep now, because the momentum is showing this thing still moving north and possibly still shifting west. It does. It is on a north track right now. There's no west involved in that track. But again, it looks to me like it's still inching towards the west. So we just need to wait and see what kind of effects it's going to have on the coast. But at the same time, guys, we can't rule out Lee yet. Lee could possibly make a dip to the south and get caught up again in our westward track that comes off South Africa. Um, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It, I mean, according to the charts, you saw them. They're all whipping up to the right, um, and that has to do with that front wall. But again, this storm could make it down south enough to get caught up in our in the westward winds and then possibly be recycled. We just don't know yet. Um, I'm going to touch on that again because this may play a part in something else in the near future. All right, here is one of the things I want to talk about. Now, this is, um, if you look where my mouse is, this is the, the area of uh, Guatemala down here, and then we get into the border of Belize, and then basically it's the Grand Cayman Sea um, is this area. Now, it's rare for storms to form in this area. Um, believe it or not, we did have a storm form here this year. It was actually uh, Tropical Storm Franklin, I believe, uh, the F letter we used. And you can see here on this map, this was the 2017 storm tracks. And you can see Franklin basically formed right in this area here um, as a tropical storm. So we know that it's possible. These storms can form here depending on the wind currents. Uh, for the most part, when they form in this area, they do tend to go up into the Gulf and then west. Or they form here and just go west because of the winds. But if you notice on this chart that I'm using, um, the, the momentum here is going 
more to the east, to the northeast area towards the southern tip of Florida and over Cuba. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because of some of the models I saw in Tropical Tidbits. Again, guys, we know from the past that anything after five days is very hard to predict, so I'm not... I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not trying to scare anybody. You guys, if those of you that follow me, you know by now that that's the last thing I try to do. I love weather. I love the way it forms. I love watching it. And it's just very interesting to me. And I just want to share this with you guys, especially for those of you that follow this stuff like I do, that are very interested in it. Um, you can clearly see here there are some severe storms uh forming in this area and if you look at the comparison to like these you know the, the land masses here these are big big storms and what you look for after this is first you look for those little storms popping up um, big thunderhead clouds rising up they bounce off the uh, the light of the sun onto satellite images this is a um, a radar deal we're not looking at visible uh, satellite right now but you can see these black areas are very very severe storms and what happens is these like start popping up left and right boom 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 and then they start getting a spin to them and that's how Franklin formed Fra uh, Franklin formed in this area and then it took a, a path up through the the Gulf it wasn't really an issue and then after that left we dealt with Harvey and that just basically took it out of anyone's mind so nobody no one even thought about Franklin but again guys check out these storms they are brewing they're getting bigger and they are starting to connect that's when you start seeing stuff like this this and this one down here. Now, there's a reason that I'm showing you this, and we're going to get to that now. All right, guys, then we're on Vent2 Sky now, and before I continue from here, I just want to let you know that I'm aware uh, what I'm going to show you from now uh, till the end of the video is basically a very, very far in the future uh, projection. So a lot of this stuff may not happen. I'm putting it in this video because I find it very interesting that these models show this much activity going on this late in the season. Again, for those of you that follow weather as close as I do or that are even interested, it's just very, it's very interesting to see this stuff still forming. So now we're going to move forward in time. Here's Tuesday the 26th. We got uh, almost our closest approach according to this chart of where Maria is going to be. Again, guys, uh, the, the counterclockwise spin tends to pull that water from the north towards the west, and that's why they're dealing. They're going to be dealing with that storm surge. And you might even see some of the water getting pulled out of those southern areas of the Baja, or not Baja, the uh, outer banks, I'm sorry. I'm getting all my areas mixed up today. Uh, but again, that counterclockwise motion does... Um, you know, change the, the directions in which the water goes. So the flooding is basically on that, that outer part of the, the outer band islands, those strip islands. So that's why they're, they're so concerned about the water and the storm surge. Um, any sort of strip island near a tropical storm or a Cat 1 storm is just not good news. That's why they're giving those evacuations to tourists who don't really have, like, homes to go into or any sort of safety. That's why there's those evacuations. It doesn't mean they're evacuating the, the people that live there. They're under the warnings and watches, which is a good thing. But it's just better to get the tourists out of there so, that, you know, they don't get stuck. Um, as we move forward, here's Wednesday the 27th. Here's the 28th, and by the 28th, it, it's uh, showing these two storms getting pulled out. Again, we want to see Lee get pulled out with Maria. Um, there is a chance it can dip south enough to get in back to this westward track, and we're going to keep an eye on that. But moving forward, this is what I wanted to show you guys. We get into Saturday the 30th. This right here is what I want to look at. Now, there's two possibilities going on here. We have a little cyclone here and one here. I'm going to back that up with another chart on Tropical Tidbits. And that's here. So we're at the GFS, and this is what I want you to focus on. Uh, it goes back to where Jose was here. Once we lost Jose, we had that high pressure connect here, and that's what's stalling Maria here. Maria has nowhere to go until this wall here of the jet stream gets there and pulls it out. So I'm going to move forward and show you what I've seen here. You have Lee down here. Again, we don't want it to go any more south, or it could miss this front wall. We don't want to see that. We want Lee to get pulled out. But as I move forward, I want you to check this out. So Maria gets pulled out that way, and then I showed you those two cyclones on Ventu Sky that popped up. Here is one of them right here, and here is the second one. Now this one doesn't look to develop into anything, and I also want you to look at this uh, system down here that comes off the west coast of Africa, showing that the Atlantic is not going to be as quiet as everyone thinks, at least according to this chart. I know we're into October 1st, we're seven or eight days away from that, and I'm even going farther into the future, so those of you that don't agree with this stuff, 
well, I, I mean, maybe you could turn the video off. I don't know. But again, this stuff is very interesting to me. This shows possibilities. I'm going to be following it daily, so we will keep everyone updated on this. But as you can see, it's still producing lows in this area for storm formation. And again, we talked about Franklin that formed right here and then went up into the Gulf and then into the States. And we didn't really hear much about it because shortly after came Harvey. But as you can see with the GFS, we still have activity in the Pacific Ocean creating tropical storms that usually ride up the west side of Mexico. Um, usually not an issue for the U.S., but again, Mexico just getting slammed with weather left and right. So we got that. This system seems to dissipate, which is a good thing. But as we move forward, guys, this is what I wanted to point out here, was this. We now have two other systems, according to this chart, by the 8th. I know that's far away, but nonetheless, here it is. We have a system forming in the middle of the Atlantic that seems to be moving east to west, towards the U.S., right over Bermuda. And then we have this system here that looks to have formed right where I showed you on that satellite image where Franklin formed, passing over Cuba, and then reforming next to the Bahamas, and then possibly making a landfall right at the border of Florida and Georgia and the border of Georgia and South Carolina. So once again, guys, I know this is far into the future, but just the fact that these models are showing the wind patterns and the pressure still possible to form these storms is very interesting to me. That's a very active season we've had, and I would not be surprised to see this. So the GFS is not only showing another system coming off of West Africa, it's showing another system that came off Africa that we didn't see form here. It didn't form until it got to the middle of the Atlantic, but we have one here. And as we move forward, that's moving west to east, guys, towards the U.S. Check that out. And then the potential of another storm that formed near Cuba, up through the Bahamas, and then to the east side of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. Now, if this is the case, we could be dealing with, once again, two storms moving in the same direction that may have an interaction with each other. Again, we don't know. This is far into the future. Not trying to scare anybody. This is not fear-mongering. This is just awareness of the current situation we're in with our weather patterns and our winds that's the way it works and there you have it at 975 pressure that could potentially be a category 3 storm again we're far away from that but still just very interesting to see these wind patterns producing these storms so late in the season um, again guys this is very warm water here that's why these storms form here if you notice a lot of them come off the coast they don't really form until they get closer to the Leeward Islands and Lesser Antilles, but we did see storms form very early here, and that's what the GFS is showing. Really quick, I want to show you the Canadian model, too, because they seem to agree on this Western African storm, uh, which you can actually see here. I'm going to backtrack. The, uh, the Canadians actually show this potentially becoming a hurricane, unlike the GFS. And you see it. It moves out west and then towards Lesser Antilles and Leeward Islands. So it's something to keep an eye on, guys. Very important. And then that, that other system we saw that formed in the middle of the Atlantic moving west to, or east to west also shows up on the Canadian models. And then we move forward, and that's what we got. So the Canadian model ends here on October 5th with a big system uh, right by Bermuda. All right, guys, so that's what I'm looking at now. I'm going to bring you any other updates I can find with this. Um, expect changes in this forecast for sure, but again... Uh, just the fact that it's showing these storms forming so late in the season is very interesting. It's intriguing to me, and I'm going to follow them until they're gone, guys. You know how it works here. I appreciate you all being with me. I will have another update on Maria as we get closer to the coast, and I will be uh, digging into specific areas for those of you that live there. All right, guys, thank you so much. I will talk to you all very soon.